Bear Green is a settlement of some 500 houses, six miles south of Dorking. It's a compact settlement enjoying a rural setting. The village sits right up against the area of outstanding natural beauty which rises from the village up to Cold Harbour and Leith Hill. The village has a few shops, a cafe and a hairdresser, but has no post office, church or doctor. The pub and the petrol station are across the busy A24 dual carriageway. The station is in the north of the village and provides a limited service. While it serves commuters, there's poor evening service and no service at all on Sundays. The station has no car park and causes parking problems on the roadway through the village. Bear Green has seen modest expansion over the years and this was accepted by the community in the neighbourhood plan in 2017. This also stated the needs of the local community and it's a bit surprising that the neighbourhood plan was not even referenced in the local plan. So Bear Green sits between the area of outstanding natural beauty, the railway and the A24, bounded to the south by ancient woodland with open green belt beyond. Further modest expansion is possible, but Mole Valley Council now proposes to make Bear Green a strategic development site, setting aside its own policies on landscape, environment and sustainability to double the population and land area of the settlement. They've given no justification for selecting Bear Green for such dramatic expansion and residents draw the obvious conclusion that the developers had an undue influence on the selection of the site. Undue influence because there are a number of errors in the documents used to select the site for inclusion in the draft local plan, errors which we want to illustrate in this presentation. All these errors have a common theme of making the site appear more appealing for development. So, let us show you. Site SAO5 sits directly alongside the AONB, being separated only by the railway line. Development of the site would seriously impair the setting of the AONB, in contravention of the Surrey Hills AONB management plan and Mole Valley's own AONB policies. The openness of the green belt should be protected. And in 2014, Mole Valley concluded that the area containing the site was significant for preventing encroachment. But six years later, the Greenbelt Review reached a different conclusion, even though the landscape had not changed. Now it's only moderate. All that had changed was the possibility of relaxation of Greenbelt protection, which had prevented the development of the site in the past. Error number one. This development proposal for the site was rejected from neighbourhood planning in 2014, following a vigorous campaign by villagers. But Mole Valley, in the Strategic Housing and Land Assessment, or Sheila, says that there is no planning history to the site. Error number two. So... Let us take you through Great Turner's Wood to the fields where the 480 houses are planned. Note that the only buildings you can see are three barns where the middle of the estate will be. To the left, even the road is masked by trees. Ahead, it's half a mile to the small borough enclave beyond the wood. From the site, we can see how Great Turner's Wood and the trees on both sides of the stream will form a significant barrier between the new site and the existing village. This means the new site can never be properly integrated with the village. If we follow the wood around to the east, we come to one of the two railway crossings that leads to the AONB. Houses built here would enjoy a spectacular view. The AONB is largely above the level of the site, which means that the site will be clearly visible from it. Now, up on the AONB, we can see that from here, the site is clearly visible. The barns will be about the middle of the estate. While a few barns add to the rural charm of this view, a sprawl of 480 houses would be an eyesore, and any tree screen would take decades to hide it from this view. Mole Valley stated in their Sheila that the village can also be seen from the AONB. 
Well, if we turn and look towards the village from here, all you can see is trees. This is the winter time, but the trees are dense enough to hide the village entirely. Did Mole Valley actually notice this? Error number three. Now we need to go to the centre of the development site, which is where the small woodland lies behind the barns. Let's go back over the railway crossing, which currently sits on a rural footpath, but could become a danger when a thousand people are living right next to it, so it might be closed for safety. The suggested opportunity of a footbridge would be highly visible urbanisation just here. The very centre of the site is another ancient woodland and behind it a large pond. This pond is shown in the draft local plan as being within the development site. But this is error number four because it's come as a complete surprise to the owner whose father is actually buried alongside the pond and definitely doesn't want it swallowed up into a housing estate. The pond forms an integral part of the land drainage here and is stocked with fish. A planning application for commercial fishing was rejected, another example of error number two. From here we have the AONB to the left and to the right in the distance the A24 and ahead Great Turner's Wood forming that southern boundary of the village. So this ancient woodland here needs to be connected by an environmental corridor to Great Turner's Wood over there to protect the habitat, even though this would cut right through the estate. However, Mole Valley, in their sustainability appraisal, missed this smaller ancient woodland and the need for a habitat connection. This is error number five. The clay soil means that the whole of this area suffers from surface water problems and the strategic environment assessment on page 22 rates the flood risk as minor negative. However, if we overlay the Environment Agency flood risk map, we see that the dark blue line of high risk cuts diagonally across the site. Error number six. One of the strong misconceptions about this site is that it would be sustainable because of its proximity to local services. In other words, the people that live here would be able and willing to walk to the station, the buses and the shops. We don't think that's realistic, because the services are at the north of the settlement. Let's see how long it would take to walk from the middle of the site to catch a London train. First we walk across what are currently fields to get to the footpath which runs alongside the woods. This is Woodside Road and it has no street lamps at all. From here to the station there are only six street lamps, even though they're residential roads, so winter walking will be much less attractive. This road, Mirbank, is the only road connecting the main village to local services and would have to carry all internal traffic from the new site as well. On to Old Horsham Road, the bus route through the village and the parking place for most commuters. Finally, here we are on the platform. It took us 21 minutes. How many people would walk that distance regularly and sometimes in the dark? Or would they jump in their car and drive here? While we're here, look at that ramp for disabled passengers. There isn't one on the other side. No, it doesn't get carried across the bridge. There's no point, because the only access to the London platform is by stairs. So this station is not inclusive, as Mole Valley policy requires. 
It's not even a useful train service except for commuters that work office hours. The last Saturday evening train to here leaves London at 26 minutes past six. So forget your London theatre trips unless it's a matinee and forget Sundays altogether because there's no service at all. So much for sustainability. People will be forced to use their cars. Haven't Mole Valley Council declared a climate emergency? The station is just one of the so-called reasonable range of local services that the Strategic Environment Assessment erroneously says Bear Green has. There are two bus routes, but like the train, they focus on the daytime. The evening service is poor, and there are only five buses on Sunday. We do have a village hall, a village store, a cafe and a few shops. There is no post office, and this is the only medical service we have in the village. No doctor, no nurse, no pharmacy. These local services do not, by any stretch of the imagination, seem reasonable for a population of 2,000, especially as sustainability is now paramount. This is error number seven. These errors together at best indicate a lack of due diligence by Mole Valley District Council, but as they have the common theme of making development more attractive, they could also be seen as a symptom of undue commercial pressure overriding the interests of the community. So, to summarise, the errors we found in the selection of Bear Green Site SA05 for strategic development are that the Greenbelt assessment was downgraded from its 2014 rating, the statement that there is no planning history to the site is false, the statement that the village is visible from the AONB is false, the pond in the middle of the site was included without the landowner's permission, the sustainability appraisal missed the second ancient woodland and its need to be connected, surface flooding risk was assessed as minor negative, but environment agency assessed part of it as high risk, and the local services are wrongly described as reasonable. Mole Valley rejected numerous sites for reasons that equally apply to Bear Green. We suggest that Mole Valley's conclusion in assessing land south of Bear Green should have been that it was unsuitable because of its impact on the openness of the Green Belt, the impact on the adjacent AONB, the inability to integrate it with the village, lack of sustainability inclusivity, inadequate local services and impact on highway safety at known hotspots. We hope that you've found this evidence useful and we respectfully request Mole Valley District Council to reconsider their proposal to eliminate 79 acres of greenbelt from our cherished rural landscape. Mm-hmm.